We're getting ready to start a project that I've been wanting to start from the very beginning. How to do the cabin first, how to get it done. Next project is the dam and water wheel to do hydropower for the cabin. So if you're just following our channel for the very first time, we've got a spring right here by the cabin. Produces a lot of water. In the rainy seasons, I would say anywhere between 500 to 1,000 gallons per minute, per minute. Uh, any other time, I would say about 300 or so. Because I can stick a five gallon bucket in it, really at any time, and it'd be full in a second. I've always wanted to do a water wheel. I thought it'd be super cool. And it would go with the theme of our cabin of being old rustic barn you know just just the way things were powered or the way things were done a long time ago that was the theme we've always wanted to keep within our cabin is because this this place also has history uh, right over here in the woods was an old shack and uh, a guy named isaac pippen used to make moonshine with the spring water and he did it for many many years right here there's stories there's I've talked to his grandson or great grandson. So anyway, there's history here and I wanted to keep some of that history alive. So I just thought a water wheel would be a really cool thing to have here. So originally what we were gonna do, we were gonna put a dam in maybe right down here where these rocks are. You can see right down there are some rocks. Not quite as far as where Jerry is in the woods right now. But we we're gonna put a dam there and just dam up this little area here where the four-wheeler is, where we've got a little fire pit there. We were gonna dam that up, have some water in there, and then we we're gonna put a water wheel in. Then we thought, no, let's not do that because of the fact that we were gonna lose a lot of our outside space. We were wanting to do a fire pit. We also love the natural cascading of the spring. And so we thought if we put a dam here, it was gonna take away from that natural cascading down. And so we thought, okay, let's just do away with the dam. Instead, what I want to do is I want to build a flume from the spring head, have it come down, and then have a water wheel somewhere like right here where this uh, cement mixer is. And then I got to thinking about, okay, well, how much water am I going to actually need to get this water wheel to spin? Because the flume's not going to pick up all of the spring's water. Really, the only way to catch all the spring's water to get the water wheel spinning, to get the maximum amount of, of power producing, would be to have a dam and then have the water wheel after the dam to where the water wheel gets 100% of the water. We're gonna have to put a dam down there, put a water wheel down there. That way we're catching all of the water. So the other really good thing about putting it down here is that I'm actually gonna be catching more water than just what's coming from the spring. Now, of course, 90 some percent of it's gonna be coming from the spring, but right here is also another part of the creek. Right there, you can see. And so that's more of a dry creek. There is a small spring up there that's also behind the cabin on this side. The main spring is over here on this side. But it, it produces a little bit of water. Now in the summertime, probably not much, if any at all. In other times of year when we get some rain or more consistent rain, instead of just getting all the spring water, now I'm getting the spring water plus this ravine. Now you may be concerned, well, what about flooding? This does not get up very high at all. So there's never been any debris up in here from flooding. So I know it's gonna, the dam's gonna be fine. I think it just came off the, or do you think it was flat? It just came off the rim. That thing get a little low with air pressure and then it'll get it in a little bit of a bind, it'll do that. Yeah. So 
So I haven't been at the cabin for a few days. I come back and this is what Jerry has done. I'll tell you what, Jerry gets it done because we're on a time crunch. We've got rain in the forecast for the entire week. The rain just doesn't stop here, here lately anyway. And so we've got uh, concrete trucks coming today. We gotta pour the concrete because what we don't want to have happen is us to get to this far and then we get rain for a week and say we get three or four inches well, this water is going to double and when it doubles there's a good chance that it could destroy what we've done so far so if we get the concrete poured give it a chance to set up and dry then we don't have to worry about it and then we can continue on with the rest of our project after the rain stops So because it's been a wet spring, my dad's brought a little bit of a rock down for us. Purpose of the rock is so that the concrete truck, which weighs a lot, can get down here and not get stuck on this muddy area. So we're going to be putting down some rock because this concrete truck's going to have to come to about this point. He's got a hopefully a long enough chute to where it'll reach that and then we'll, we'll have to spread it from there on over to the other side. So what Jerry did while I was away was he cleaned out all of this area down here, as you can tell, with his trencher. Then once he got it cleaned out and got all the brush, we cut down a lot of dead trees. There was a, I had probably five or four sycamore trees down here next to the water that had died for some reason. So we had to cut those down. Then Jerry got his trencher and he dug out basically a trench. He had to also at the same time while he was digging that out, he had to push a lot of dirt up against where the water is back there to kind of create a makeshift dam for right now. Then he built a flume or a trough that caught the water and carried it over where we're going to be actually pouring the concrete. Now it's not catching all the water. There's still some of it running underneath through the rocks. But as we begin to pour the concrete, it'll push that water out. I have had a lot of people ask me how much water the spring is actually producing and they've told me ways that I can measure the water but I have to capture the water. I have to capture it into a certain place like what we've got going on now, and I can measure the flow that's going over. However, I'm not gonna do it just yet because I'm still losing some, again, like I said, underneath here through this dam. So even if I measured there what's falling over the flume, it still wouldn't be accurate. So once we have the dam built, then I can actually get a true measurement of our flow, how many gallons per minute, that our spring is producing. The whole purpose of this project of building the dam is all about the cabin because we have to be producing electricity for our off-grid cabin. So imagine a dam right here, okay? After the dam, we're gonna have a flume pretty similar to this one that is gonna collect the water from around the top area of the dam and then it's gonna catch all of that water and send it over the top of a water wheel and get that water wheel to spinning. Then that water wheel is gonna have a hydro generator that is gonna be attached via pulleys. And then that generator, once it reaches 500 RPMs, is gonna be producing 24 volts of electricity. That's how fast we have to get the generator to be spinning. And then it's gonna send it on up to the charge controllers, to the batteries, to the house. I think out of all of the projects we've had with our cabin, this one has probably stressed me out the most because it's something that we've had to kind of hold off and wait until the very end. And when you build a cabin that's supposed to be off grid, you're banking all of that on, well, I hope we can be producing electricity. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's why it's worried me so much about, can we do it? Because, I, and I think we can. I've seen lots of people on YouTube that have produced electricity but nothing quite like how we're doing it. I see a Pelton wheel, which is a smaller micro hydro generator, of course solar, of course wind, but really it's a rarity for somebody to have a good enough water source in order to be producing electricity from it. Now you also have to check with your state, maybe your government area to see, okay, can I actually dam up my water source? Here in rural Missouri where we're at, I don't have to check with anybody. 
And I'm not saying that out of cockiness. I'm just saying that out of that's actually the law. I can dam it up if I want to. I can actually capture it and send it to another piece of my property if I want to. Now, ultimately, it's still gonna flow off of my property onto somebody else, but that somebody else is not private land. That somebody else is government because we join National Forest. So all the water that comes from my property flows through National Forest, goes on down into the lake of Bull Shoals. But it begins here, so legally it's mine. Now what happens to it after it goes on to government land? That's theirs. So again, dam, water wheel, electricity going up to the cabin is the idea. We'll see how it turns out. So what Jerry's doing right now is he's trying to level up our road. Because of all the rain and us traveling on this old path, what it's actually done is it's wore out this side of the road. And so anytime you come through here in a truck, you're always leaning this way. So you can kind of see dad leaning there in the tractor. So anyway, Jerry's trying to level that up so when the concrete truck does come through here, he doesn't almost tip over. Come watch the concrete. How far? From there to there. I need to go get my mud boots. Now, yeah, why didn't you bring the mud boots? I didn't think we were going to have this much fun. Well, you knew you were going to be playing in the water. Makes the dream work. That's right. So he's just gonna crawl up and just take a nap on mama's back. Thanks, Grady. Good job, Grady. Dump it in the hole? Yeah, dump it in the hole, fill that up as we go. Uh, we'll go we'll like right here and stand on. Well, just when things started getting good, I ran out of memory on the memory card on my camera. So we didn't get the final shots of us getting everything. Lane was actually videotaping some of that for us whenever we were doing it. And it was a job, mainly because the cement truck only had, I think like six chutes total. And so it really only reached to the very first section. The rest of it, we had to rake it all over or shovel it all over. And then we got to a point where it just wasn't going as smoothly as what we wanted it to. We were having a lot of water coming into the forms. It's, it's really hard to keep all the water out. And so then we started shoveling the cement into buckets 
and then moving it over and dumping it into the, the side that's the farthest away. And that went a lot faster for us and we got that done pretty quickly. So the next step is, is wait for the rain to stop so that we can continue on with the next section, which is gonna be another four foot higher than this. It's gonna be a, a thinner section, maybe only eight inches wide, but that's gonna be the main damn part. This was just kind of the, the foundation or the footing, so to speak. And then we'll have the, the main wall part, which we'll do again, like I said, once it dries up. Okay, so you guys are going to put your hands in the concrete. Alright, here I go. I gotta crunch pretty hard. Here. Okay, now get that. Whoa! Hi, Tom! Whoa! That's so weird. You got six Did fingers. Did you do it? Yeah! You did it over there. My hand I don't have six fingers. Okay. What can okay, I do? Just a little soon, but that's all right. Ready? What do I do? Now help me. There you go. Okay, straighter. Gabriel's turn. Hey, hey guys, go rinse your hands off in the water. Let Gabriel have a turn, okay? Oh, you did so Oh, good job. That's so okay. good. Straight up. Woohoo! 